just when you think you've decided on the perfect optic to top off your latest rifle build, you might stumble across the not so well known Trijicon AccuPoint. Once again, the Wixom Wizards blessed us with another fiber optic tritium combo, making us second guess ourselves before we click that checkout button. Like its older brother, the ACOG, Trijicon wanted to deliver a low power variable option for those of us who have commitment issues with a fixed power optic. Now you're just down to deciding between the 1 to 4 power TR24 or the 1 to 6 power TR25. The older TR24 weighing in at only 14.4 ounces uses a fiber optic band that half wraps around the rear end. The newer TR25 coming in at 19.2 ounces uses a top mounted dial to adjust the illumination levels. Both also illuminate with tritium at night when ambient light is not available. The TR24 does take longer to close off the fiber optic as a downside, but is equally an upside if you like having a more precise level of illumination like a 12 brightness setting red dot. The TR25 closes off the fiber optic much faster with the top mounted dial design, but its short rotation is more like a 6 setting red dot when turning the dial. I did find that the clear cover on the TR25 is a bit of a frosted plastic that seems to let in a bit less light than the older TR24. In the older TR24 I have the popular post and triangle reticle, and in the TR25 I have the German number 4 crosshair. The large triangle definitely gets brighter since it's a much larger 4.2 MOA shape being illuminated while the German crosshair is a thin 0.3 or 1 3rd MOA line with a 0.6 or 2 3rd MOA dot that does not get as noticeably bright due to its small size. The TR24 eye box on 1X has plenty of room to move around up close at 1 inch. Clear back to 6 inches it still has a usable eye box, but its optimal eye relief on 1X is roughly 3 inches with a field of view of 94 feet at 100 yards. Walking the eye box back on 1 power you can see the scope shadow and its sensitivity. I went all the way back to the end of the stock and discovered this optic has a freak of nature eye relief that Trijicon decided not to mention, but here it is. This is about 4 extra inches behind a fully extended stock and you could still use the reticle as long as you don't move around too much. Coming back to the optimal eye relief on one power, this is the closest to what the view actually looks like in person from 100 to 300 yards. On 4 power, the optimal eye relief is again 3 inches. Even at this distance, the eye box scope shadow is a bit sensitive and a bit foggy. With a field of view of 24 feet at 100 yards, all I can say is that dialing back to 3 power is the only way to free up some of the eye box sensitivity with this optic. The TR25 eye box on 1X is almost as good as the TR24 as we come back to its optimal eye relief of almost 4 inches with a field of view of 117 feet at 100 yards. On 4 power, the optimal eye relief is a sensitive 3.5 to 4 inches Coming back from the rear objective, the eye box gets very sensitive out to 7 inches. Back on 4X, the eye box is much better in comparison to the TR24 on its full 4X magnification. With the TR25 on the full 6 power setting, you have a field of view of 19 feet at 100 yards, but this also comes with a sensitive eye box. But with a good cheek weld and proper eye relief of about 4 inches, it is manageable. Back down to 1 power, this is what your view looks like in person as close as I can try to represent from 100 to 300 yards. The 1x magnification is great on both optics for close range shooting. The triangle post can move between multiple targets without having to find the reticle and boy does this thing get nuclear reactor right under the sun. The TR25 has a clearer sight picture and a thinner bezel taking away the distracting black ring while shooting with both eyes open. The thin center dot on the German number 4 reticle is slower to pick up, but this underrated thick outer reticle has the ability to draw you into the center with its large oversized post outside of the center. If the target is between the thicker outer duplex post up close, you have your shot. It's true one power is great outdoors 10 yards and beyond, but indoors tends to make the environment magnify smaller. There is a marked 1.5 power which is useful indoors with both eyes open when objects are closer than 10 yards to match the magnification between your eyes, the optic, and your indoor environment. In town, these two aren't much different when it comes to identifying at distance. The extra zoom of the TR25 is noticeable out to 6 power, especially if you need to make a positive identification of a threat, like behind one of these semi-trailers for example. Identifying targets at further distances is a great ability to have since you can't hit what you can't see. 
At dawn, the reticle is definitely brighter in the TR-24 when the light begins to fade. The German reticle with its fine dot can barely keep up in the illumination department. Again, the TR-24 seems to have lower quality glass compared to the TR-25, but it does have the less sensitive eye box of the two on one X. This video here had great lighting and happened to capture how clear and distinct the two are in comparison as best as my iPhone could get. The extra magnification and clarity really is noticeable at longer distances than the TR-25. The thinner bezel and amazing glass remind you of high quality optics like the Razer HD 1-6. And even if we zoom the TR-25 back to 4 power to make it even with the TR-24, you can see how much better the sight picture is on the TR-25. If cost and close quarter shooting is your priority, then the TR-24 will not disappoint. But comparing the features makes the choice easy between the two. If I could only have one, then the choice is... The TR25 1-6. The faster dial system to eliminate, the thinner bezel, the larger field of view, and the clearer glass made this an easy decision. The last part to this is deciding which reticle you want before you drop your hard-earned money. Now to be fair, I didn't choose the 1-6 because of the reticle. I actually took out a TR25 that has the triangle post in it to confirm that any reticle was better in the TR25 due to its higher quality features. Now if you favor a close quarter setup, then go with the triangle post. It's definitely a faster CQB reticle. This large triangle with a fine point at the tip makes shooting with both eyes open easy. On 6 power it still has a sensitive eye box, so just dial it back to 5 power for those longer range shots. With this smaller upgraded 2.8 MOA triangle in the 1 to 6, I would recommend a 36 300 yard zero. Simply place your target out at 36 yards and begin your zeroing process. The AccuPoint comes with precise 1 quarter MOA adjustments in the turrets. For beginners, this means each click will move your shot 1 quarter of an inch at 100 yards, and back at 36 yards, each click will roughly be 1 12th of an inch. If you shoot 2 inches to the right at 36 yards, it would take 24 clicks to the left to center your shots. Once you've centered your impacts here at 36 yards, I recommend placing another target out to its second intersection point at 300 to true the reticle in. With minute of angle, any slight deviation at 36 will be magnified at 300. If you're off center to the right one third of an inch at 36 yards, you could be off up to three inches at 300 yards, which is why you should always true your zero in at its second intersection point. Once you've placed your target at 300 yards, slowly take another three shot group using the tip of the triangle center mass on six power for increased precision. Now go down and inspect your target to see what adjustments need to be made. Just remember that at 300 yards, these one quarter MOA adjustments on the turret become three quarter inch adjustments out at 300 yards. After the adjustments have been made, always confirm with one more shot group and be sure to really take your time here. If you do it patiently the first time, you'll be able to save ammo and feel good knowing that it's been trued in properly before you store the rifle away. Now you can reset your turrets by pulling up on the knob, turning it to zero, and pressing the turret back down and you're good to go. If the adjustment part was confusing, let me know because I have an in-depth marksmanship video course that explains minute of angle and the truing process. Now the reason I personally chose the German number 4 crosshair for myself has to do with the reticle size. Having 6 power magnification enhances your ability to shoot mid-range to long range and boy does this German number 4 do exactly just that. I zeroed this same reticle to 36300 and also trued it in at 300 yards. You see with the 2.8 MOA triangle post on the left and the 2 3rd MOA dot on the right will animate out to distance what happens to your point of aim on these pesky invading robots that happen to again have a similar human torso size of 19 by 22 inches. On 6 power the triangle post will cover 2.8 inches at 100 yards and the dot will cover 2 thirds of an inch at 100. Out of 200, this number doubles, making the triangle now cover 5.6 inches of the torso and the dot only covering an inch and a third. Out at 300, the triangle covers 8.4 inches, while the dot only covers 2 inches. Now you can use a holdover at chest with the triangle at 400, just know that this is where the triangle starts to cover a lot of the target width, unlike the crosshair, which allows you to see the majority of the target. If only the head of the robot was exposed behind a berm at this distance, the triangle and post covers your target completely to see what your point of aim is. To make this hit, you would have to come up beside the target for your hold, and then move over to center which will cover your target. Here any slight movement could also jeopardize your impact, and this is where the crosshair really shines. 
Once you start getting out to 500 and beyond, the triangle post completely covers your target and holdovers become less and less precise, especially if the targets are only partially exposed. The only way to avoid this is by using your dials. We know that if you have a 36 300 yard zero, you can basically shoot point of aim center mass and your impacts will hit within a six inch group out to 300, regardless of your magnification. What I do to solve this is shoot at a 400 yard target center mass while adjusting my turrets and then confirming my impacts. I just shoot and listen for an impact, adjust my turrets up again and shoot until I'm shooting over the top of the target. I count my clicks and determine which round was my center impact at 400 and then I mark a small dot on my dial. I do the same for 500 yards and mark another dot. If you have access to a longer range, you can mark out to any distance your rifle was capable of hitting. This method is very effective for reticles that don't have a bullet drop design. This gives you a point of aim, point of impact out to 300, and then a super quick dial system for 400 and beyond. If their head is at 500, just dial to your 500 mark and take the headshot. Be advised the website does a terrible job of properly representing their reticles compared to how they look in real life. I assure you they are much more impressive in person than the clip art version we get through the website. Maybe in the future Trijicon will just start using real photos which will probably land them more sales if customers knew how good they really are. These AccuPoints also use an older wire reticle technology which is why they don't have any bullet drop or wind hold reticle options like the ACOG or VCOG. BDC reticles require a glass etching process for their more complex displays. The closest you can get to a BDC reticle using this wire reticle system is the mill dot or MOA dot versions, or learn to use your dials and create a dope chart. Both of these optics can be used without the caps if you prefer to use external dial and adjustments for bullet drop if that's what your preferred method is. Being a product of Trijicon, I can safely assume it was built with durability in mind. The magnification dial doesn't feel loose or sluggish and comes with a pre-machined knob to be used as a throw lever. I do recommend buying the throw lever extension they make so that you can speed up your magnification dialing. This was a great feature also added since the older TR24 requires you to buy a separate throw lever. The glass coatings have held up to all dust and wipe downs after shooting suppressed to clear off any carbon emissions. This 19.2 ounce 30 millimeter body feels like a well-built tank with only one issue so far. The housing for the fiber optic dial has three small screws securing it to the body tube and I did have them come loose. I simply re-tighten them down and so far haven't had them come loose again. If this happens, don't be afraid to add some yellow Loctite to secure them down. I also shot this optic with a fast reset trigger to check for any zero shift with no issues. After a few hundred rounds, the TR-25 held its zero under repetitive recoil. Now if you'd like to know how I run this optic, I decided it fills a good recon pistol roll. This 14.5 inch bill with the SBA3 brace makes it a pistol in my state so I can have it ready to go in my vehicle with my concealed carry permit. The pistol grip I went with, the BCM Mod 2 to store my suppressor paperwork, and its upright angle has a larger diameter than the stock BCM grip. The charging handle is a Radian Raptor SD which helps mitigate suppressor gas blowback. It's not as good as the PRI Gas Buster, but it is ambidextrous, and the coolest color, OD Green. The lower is the Aero M4E1 with a CMC flat 3.5 pound trigger. This is my favorite lower on the market for assembling your own rifle. The flared magwell makes speed reloading a breeze and the built-in trigger guard eliminates the usual grinding on your knuckle joint that comes with mil-spec trigger guards. I have a Toolcraft Nickel Boron M16 bolt carrier which I have no emotional connection to but it does run flawlessly even with the fast reset trigger. I just used PMAGs mostly for training and aluminum sure feeds for duty use. This optic came with an American Defense QD recon mount, but I opted to use the Aero SPR mount since it only weighs 3.2 ounces. Not only does this keep the weight down, but I rarely use QD mounts since my optics stay with the rifle I assign them to. This optic does have a 4 inch eye relief, so the SPR mount does push the optic forward to its optimal placement. I occasionally wrap some 550 cord on the rifle just in case it's ever needed and around the optic I can shove in some natural concealment into the cord from my current terrain to decrease my visibility. For backup iron sights I have the canted micro sights from Knight's Armament. These allow a better grip to drive the rifle and eliminate any clutter on my rail when shooting on 1x. I get a full field of view this way since the AccuPoint gives you one of the best true 1x views on the market. The handguard is a BCM MCMR13 which I love for its lightweight ergonomic design. 
It fits natural in the hand when driving the rifle, but beware, under high rates of fire, this thing gets super hot to the point you can barely hold the rifle. Either pack some gloves or go old school back to a quad rail like the Daniel Defense RIS if you're going to be doing high rates of fire or running a suppressor full time. The suppressor I run is the Yankee Hill Turbo 556, which is one of my favorite due to its fast mounting systems. It's just as quiet as my other high-end cans and has no point of impact shift. The muzzle device I run is the QD flash hider option from Yankee Hill to mitigate flash and also avoid muzzle blasting my teammates with concussions from a muzzle brake. The light mount is a Valhalla Balder unibody kit that comes with multiple angled inserts so that you can get the light as flush as possible to the rifle. I still use a standard Surefire pressure tail cap with the Mod Light OKW headlamp which has become my favorite weapon light. The powerful center beam can spot targets out to 300 yards at night and the outer splash lighting is still good for indoor use. For the barrel I have a Daniel Defense Government Profile 14.5 Cold Hammer Forged Barrel. I cannot ever stress enough how good their barrels really are. They always get brushed off as a mil spec barrel but I've had multiple sub MOA barrels from them. These chrome lined chambers eat every type of ammo I've thrown at them including lower end steel casing ammo. I don't like betting my life on a cheap barrel that has reoccurring malfunctions or loses its precision. Daniel Defense gives you a premium cold hammer forged barrel off the same assembly line that is being used by our tier 1 operators. The last thing I want to do is ask Trijicon to please keep producing fiber optic tritium rifle scopes. I know tritium is so expensive that it's a turn off for people when they have to shell out the money for a new optic but I believe in waiting and buying a high-end optic is a must. This isn't an area you want to cheap out on. Just ask yourself if your life is worth a few hundred extra dollars and buy yourself a high-quality optic. I hope you like this video and stay tuned for future content coming down the pipeline. I try to make quality over quantity, which is why I don't upload very often. Also be sure to check out my low ammo training handbook video that walks you through the physical handbook for beginners I created and pick one up if you like. From safety to live courses of fire that will help you get proficient with your weapons and gear, it can also be used to instruct others in a fun, productive way. They make a great gift for family, friends, or any beginner that wants to maximize a small ammo count into something productive. As always, thanks for watching.